Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us proceed with the next lecture, lecture number 16, natural dyeing of cotton. Having understood the value for mordanting and other pretreatment, we now proceed for the natural dyeing of cotton. Cotton as I told you is the toughest to dye with natural dye. Cotton, a natural cellulosic fiber is the most common textile fiber in the world as it possesses many useful characteristics such as comfort, is soft to the hand and has good absorbency, color retention, good strength and machine washable. Cellulose is a macromolecule made up of glucose units connected by 1,4 oxygen bridges with the polymer repeating unit being an hydro beta cellulose. In cotton, natural cellulose fibers are negatively charged due to the presence of carboxyl and hydroxyl groups. Many new dyeing sources have been worked on as perfect dyeing agents for cotton. After tannic acid and mordanting as pretreatment before dyeing, these steps eventually help in getting new shades on cotton fabric. So, we have seen that only in the case of cotton, we need to pretreat the cotton after scouring and bleaching and mercerization. The treatment that is required is treatment with tannic acid. After the treatment of tannic acid, mordanting step is done and then only we can proceed for dyeing. Some mandatory steps in cotton dyeing. As cotton fabric is not a good substrate for natural dye, not very receptive from that point of view, there is a need to prepare the fabric before natural dyeing. Scouring, bleaching, this step removes all the oils and waxes. Tannic acid pretreatment, this step prepares the fabric for better dye adherence. Pre mordanting, better chelation with metal mordant attaches the dye firmly. And then dyeing with natural dye extract sourced from nature. Factors to be considered for natural dyeing of cotton measurement of dye stuff and mordants. Dyeing specification starts with proper measurements, otherwise shades cannot be matched. From batch to batch there will be a variation. pH of the dye bath that is natural dyes are sensitive towards pH, so the pH of the dye bath is very important. Temperature during dyeing. Temperature has an effect on natural dyeing. Different dyes work better at different temperatures. So, we have to make a note as to what is the optimum temperature for a particular natural dye and then follow only that. Agitation. Agitation plays a vital role in natural dyeing. Some fibers and yarns are very soft and require very slow agitation. Agitation means it should be stirred because if the fabric is stagnant in the dye bath, then there is all the possibility that dyeing will not be even. Fixing Fiber dyed textile should be rinsed after they have been dyed and some dyes will still bleed for some several washings afterwards. It is the superficial layer of the dye that is getting washed off. It is advisable to add some washing soda to plant fiber or some vinegar to animal fiber 
to return them to their optimum pH in the last rinse. So, these additives are added so that the final wash is in the neutral condition. There are safety measures that need to be taken and are required in the natural dyeing of cotton. Because dyeing substances and mordants can be hazardous, poisonous, there are some precautions to be taken before dyeing. Dyeing should never be done in cooking vessels or vessels from the kitchen. All measuring and stirring spoons, scales, thermometers, jars, etc., etc. should be separately used for dyeing purposes. They should not be mixed with the daily use cooking uh, utensils. The work area should be covered. Wearing gloves to avoid contact with skin is necessary. Dye in a well ventilated area or outdoor is recommended. Rinsing fiber or fabric thoroughly after dyeing to remove all the excess chemical is essential. Do not inhale steam from dye baths. If any itching, burning, rash or other reaction happens, get away from the dye bath. That means, you have to take all the safety measurements in order to protect yourself. If you feel that any irritant is there, whether it is in terms of the dye bath solution or the vapors, one has to be careful and not be uh, you know affected by it. Now, let us start one by one dyeing cotton with natural dyes. The first dye that has been chosen is Katachu, Katha. It is available from Acacia Katachu, which is the botanical name of the plant. Dyeing with this natural dye has been carried out on cotton fabric. Katachu dye can be very promising dye with natural cotton and its use can produce many earthy shades of brown. Different metal mordants were used, then dyeing with different parameters like salt concentration, dye bath pH, different MLR ratio that is mother liquor to the you know material ratio, different dye bath temperature and time has been carried out. So, a thorough study was done changing one parameter at a time and looking at the effectivity of cotton dyeing with Katachu. The pre-washed cotton sample were mordanted with ferrous sulphate, stannic chloride, stannous chloride and alum. Then they were dyed with by aqueous extract of Katachu powder, the percentage of which should be well defined. It could be from 6 to 10 percent. Dyeing was carried out in sonicator for an hour and showed good dye uptake. The dye bath was reused in some cases and more dye extract was added to the previous dye bath, so that maximum dye uptake is facilitated. Now, this is a very simple process because what we realize that conventional dyeing method is slower and we can get the same effectivity or even better effectivity when we use sonicator dyeing. In the previous lecture, I had shown examples of Rubia cordifolia and Eclipta alba, where we showed that conventional and sonicator methods were compared. So, it is a well established lab, uh, you know lab technique that sonicator dyeing is far more superior, takes less time, gives better dye uptake. Then once the fabric is dyed and washed, the next exercise that we do is to find the fastness. Fastness testing of dyed cotton fabric is done in accordance with Indian standards that is BIS standards. The specific tests are color fastness for light which is IS 2454 of 1985, color fastness to ribbing is IS 766 1988, color fastness to washing 
is IS68779 and color fastness to perspiration is IS971983. There are specified instruments which are used for testing. Zeno tester is used for testing the light fastness of the dyed fabric. Wash wheel is used uh, of the thermolab model is used to test the washing fastness as the name suggests of the dyed fabric. Perspirometer of uh, Sasmira model is used for the testing of perspiration fastness of the dyed fabric and croc meter that is, is made or is tested by Ravindra engineering model and can test the rubbing fastness of the dyed fabric. So, we have well defined testing methods which have been already documented and published and followed by all the dyers all around India the Indian standard methods for testing the light fastness, the rubbing fastness, the washing fastness and the fastness to perspiration. Then we also measure because when it is a dyed fabric, the dyed swatches need to be tested how much of dye uptake has taken place. How do we say that this dye uptake was better than that one? So, there is a method which was developed by Kubelka in 1954 and it is known as Kubelka Monk equation. The relative color strength of the dyed fabric is expressed as K by S and is measured by the light reflectance technique. Using the Kubelka Monk equation, the reflectance of dyed fabric was measured by color matching system on premier color scan photometer following Kabelka monk equation that k by s is equal to 1 minus r square upon 2 r, where r is the decimal fraction of the reflectance of dyed fabric. k by s was measured. The C lab values were determined for controlled, modified and differently modented dyed fabrics. Other color parameters like change in hue that is delta H, change in chroma that is delta C, change in whiteness and darkness delta L and total color difference delta E were carried out by C lab in 1976 standard formula. So, this is a well defined already established methodology by which the K by S or the dye uptake of any dyed fabric is calculated. Dye exhaustion. Now, I had shown you a graph where I had shown that the dye bath concentration started from 3.38 and then slowly when we made treatment how the dry dye was uh, absorbed by the fabric, but it goes through a formula. The dye exhaustion percentage that is E percentage was calculated according to the following equation. Percentage of E is equal to E 0 minus E R A R upon E 0 star in into 100, where A 0 and A R are respectively the absorbances of dye bath before and after at lambda max of the dye used. The absorbance was measured on spectrophotometer at lambda max of the dye that is being used. So, the lambda max is the maximum absorption which a dye takes. This is how whole dye process can be carried out and can be standardized and various beautiful colors can be obtained. Now, determination of color difference index CDI value. After application of dyes, the magnitudes of respective delta E, delta C, delta H and MI values irrespective of their signs and direction was utilized to obtain a single index called CDI value by empirical relationship that CDI is equal to delta E into delta H 
upon delta C into M i. Color difference index C D i indicates the combined effects of different known individual color differences parameters between any two samples when dyed with varying conditions of dyeing indicating dispersion of color value. To understand the combined effect of different dyeing variables by a single parameter for application of same concentration of dye between two sets of dyeing under any varying conditions of dyeing like pH taking only the magnitude of the respective delta E, delta C, delta H and M i values irrespective of their sign and direction may be considered to calculate the C D i value using this formula. So, it is now a very well defined science. There is no ambiguity about how we can find out the color difference from one fabric swatch to another fabric swatch. Now, I told you that in many cases when we try to compare with the control sample this is how it is evaluated by first taking the readings of the control sample and then by taking with the dyed sample or the treated sample. For re reproducibility of shades, for reproducibility of shades in dyeing it is important to follow that we should follow certain standards only stainless steel dye bath should be used. And I gave you an example that when iron or rotted iron jigger was used, how the whole dyeing process of bulk dyeing got destroyed. Water hardness should be not more than 300 ppm. Fabric and yarn water ratio should be 1 is to 20 or a little different 1 is to 30 also. Now, giving you an example of what is C lab value H and C values of cotton dyed fabric with catechu. When we have only control sample, the L value is 56.174, but when we modent it, we get it 54.80. Now, what does this mean? The lower the L value, the darker is the sample. Similarly, when we have K by S value of the control as 35.60, when it is dyed with or pre-modented with potassium dichromate, it becomes the K by S value becomes 75.34. And as I had told you that ferrous always causes darkening of the sample, therefore the K by S value of ferrous modented catechu dyed sample showed 171.43 as the K, K by S value. So, this whenever this swatch is measured in whichever photo spectrometer it will give the same results. And therefore, C lab values are universally accepted. They are like the, the L A B value actually decides the shade and tone of the dyed fabric. Now, coming to the fastness properties of the catechu dyed samples of cotton, if it is only tannic acid, we did not figure out the fastness property. But when it is tannic acid and alum treated, the washing fastness was 4 to 5 and light fastness was 4 to 5, but the perspiration fastnesses were 3 to 4, but the rubbing fastness was 4 and both wet and dry. But when ferrous sulphate was used, washing fastness was better up to 5, light fastness was 4 to 5 and the perspiration fastnesses also were better and the rubbing fastness remained the same. That was not the case in potassium dichromate. Dichromate the wash fastness, light fastness remained less and so was the perspiration fastness. 
So, what does it mean that for Katachu, alum seems to be a good mordant which can give good results and good K by S value. Now, these were the shades that were obtained. Now, 0 is control, 1 is just treated with tannic acid second one is alum plus tannic acid ferrous, third one is ferrous and fourth is potassium dichromate. Dyeing with catechu powder gave fair to good fastness properties by conventional dyeing method. The color range with catechu dyed swatches varied from rich dark skin color to dark coffee brown in the case of different mordants. As it is a fairly cheap source of natural colorant, it is ideally suited for industrial dyeing of cotton. Now, there are more things that I need to tell about these colored swatches. Not only the color you know is different, although in the screen it may not be appearing, but in reality uh, the, the shades are quite bright and they are very uh, deep in color. The color depth, the dye adherence because that only goes to show that the fastness properties were very good unless and until the dye is uh, uh, adhering very well. It will not give a good result for the, uh, the dyeing. Shades obtained from Katachu dye. You can see here that they are numbered as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0 stands for control, 1 is only tannic acid treated fabric dyed with catechu, second is alum treated and dyed with catechu, third is ferrous sulfate treated dyed with catechu and fourth is potassium dichromate which is dyed with catechu. Now dyeing with catechu powder gave fair to good fastness properties by conventional dyeing method. The color range and the catechu dyed swatches varied from rich dark skin color to dark coffee brown color in the case of different mordants. As it is a fairly cheap source of natural colorant, it is ideally suited for industrial application and industrial dyeing. Now, hi, here I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the same dye which looks quite the 0 and 1 look quite alike. One is controlled and one is having tannic acid. But when we measure after washing the K by S value, they will be very different. Why? Because tannic acid would have helped to absorb more dye molecules as compared to the control which is unmordanted, untannic acid treated fabric. So, what I am trying to draw your attention is that tannic acid is required for pretreatment. If we do not use tannic acid, the mordants also will not show such deepening effect and therefore, what we looked at in the previous lecture where we were looking at all the pretreatments that are required for cotton, the now I am exemplifying it because cotton needs tannic acid treatment before mordanting. So, the step wise goes like this, first it is fabric preparation by scouring, bleaching of the cotton, then it is treatment, pre-treatment with tannic acid and followed by modern treatment which could be alum, which could be ferrous sulphate, which could be potassium dichromate, copper sulphate and so on. And then only we will get the desired product and the desired dyed color. Similar experiment was done with onion skin. The dry onion skin produces natural dye which has been used for dyeing textiles. Innovative dyeing with onion has been shown to give good dyeing results. 
pre-treatment with 2% of metal mordant and using 5% of plant extract weight of the fabric was found to be optimum and showed very good fastness properties for dyed fabrics. For effective natural dyeing with dry skin extract of allium sepa which is the other botanical name of onion, conventional method of dyeing was carried out using metal mordants. A two step dyeing was carried out, 2% mordant by the weight of the fabric was used as pre-treatment and then dyed with onion scale or onion skin extract and this was carried out for 3 hours at a temperature between 30 to 40 degrees centigrade which is very close to the room temperature. The dyed fabric were dipped in saturated brine solution for 15 minutes acting as a dye fix and then rinsed thoroughly in tap water and allowed to dry in open air under shade. It is such a simple procedure that the dyeing is carried out with a certain recipe, 5% of the plant extract, 2% of the modern extract and or modern solution just for 3 hours it is agitated at room temperature close to room temperature 30 to 40 degrees and there it is it is ready readily dyed the dyed fabric was then dipped in dye fix which is made from a simple sodium chloride solution only for 15 minutes and then thoroughly rinsed in tap water and allowed to dry and we had already mentioned that in order to avoid fading, we air dry the, these samples, wet samples under shade. The calorimetric data obtained from the dyed fabric and yarn which had been pre-treated with tannic acid and metal modern markedly improved the wash fastness. In terms of change of shade of the dyed fabric, with respect to the control samples and remember the control sample does not have any pretreatment or any mordant. It also increased the color strength and flattened the shade of the dyeing. Flatten means it becomes very evenly distributed on the entire surface of the fabric. When we look at the C lab values of the onion skin dyed swatches we see that the LAB value, C, the chroma value, the hue value and the K by S value. The control shows an L value of 47 whereas the pre-modented tannic acids shows L value as 46 and the potassium dichromate pre-modented shows 42 which means that slowly it is coming down. Similarly, if you look at the K by S value, the control sample shows 69.1, whereas the ferrous sample shows 124.25 and the stannous chloride, stannic chloride shows 158.97. Now K by S value is something that we have to always be concerned about because that is what indicates how much of dye uptake has taken place. If we do not worry about the lowering or the increasing of the K by S value, the lowering of the L value and the increasing of the K by S value, we will not be able to come to a conclusion which one is better for a modern most suited for a particular dye and in this case I will say that stannic chloride stands quite uh, in agreement with what I made a statement just now because whereas we know in any case will show darkening of color because of its nature iron darkens every color 
but stannic is solution is colorless and when that gives a dark shade dyed fabric that means that color really has come from not the iron or the modern part but it has come from the dye part when fastness properties of onion skin dyed fabric is assessed we see that control sample shows washing fastness and light fastness in the range of 3 to 4 and all other perspiration and rubbing even 3 but when cotton is modented with alum the fastness increases almost by 1 grade and it becomes washing and light fastness become 4 whereas the Uh, perspiration and uh, other things become one grade higher when the cotton is treated with ferrous sulfate the washing fastness still becomes better the light fastness remains the same or a little better but perspiration and rubbing fastnesses remain the same but with copper sulfate not much changes were seen it is almost close to that of the one which was achieved through alum but it in the case of perspiration and rubbing fastness there is one great improvement and therefore we can say that although you know ferrous uh, is the best in terms of washing and light fastnesses but because it gives very dark color which may or may not be desirable at that point in time therefore alum and copper sulfate both can be considered as good mordants for onion skin dyed swatches so what we can say that the the onion skin is best suited for with a mordant which could be alum or copper sulfate and for darker shades we can use ferrous sulfate now when i show these swatches you can see for yourself that control is much lighter alum has a little different shade copper sulfate ferrous sulfate become darker dichromate again has a different uh, lighter shade but uh, stannic chloride and stannous chloride show very different depth color depth and out of that stannic one stands uh, uh, you know apart from all these so when the skin or scale of alium sepa that is onion bulb a waste material has been shown to have good dyeing prospects in dyeing cotton fabric metal mordants in conjunction with alium sepa was found to enhance the dyeability and fastness properties the purpose of using this source was with an idea to produce value addition dyed product from kitchen waste as the dye has very good potential of uptake adherence to the fabric and has good wash and light fastnesses dark shades of brown were obtained from the onion scales now a variety of shades uh, were obtained now if we want to get this it is one of the cheapest material which is readily available now you will say that how much of onion scale can be obtained from kitchen obviously in in a small family nuclear family only five or six onion will be consumed in a day but if you go to the main mandi of any town where the onion is being sold in bulk in sacks there you will find you know lot of onion skin wastage around so although it is a kitchen waste but it can be procured from mandis for no cost and they can be collected from there in bulk and people have been collecting it and using it so it is like using a waste material for a value added dyed fabric and now this particular cotton has a very good rich Uh, brown shades various shades of brown with different mordants moving on we now will discuss dyeing with orthocarpus bark orthocarpus is nothing but 
jackfruit. The bark of the jackfruit tree can be extracted and very good results have been obtained. For this, the color is so deep that pretreatment with only 1% of metal bondant and using 4% of bark extract with the weight of the fabric was found to be suitable and showed very good fastness properties for cotton dyed fabrics with hue colors ranging from light brown to greenish to brown. So you see there is a variety of colors that can be obtained from one extract. Remember I had told that from the single extract by manipulating different modern metal salts we can get different colors altogether not only different shades but sometimes even different colors. The uptake upon by the cotton fabric ranges from 55 to 62 percent with different mordants. The effectiveness of metal mordant arthocarpus is bet better dye uptake appears to be an improved process resulting in good dye adherence which results in good fastness properties. So you see that it is also one of the easily available you know material and this can be utilized in a very easy manner only 4 percent of the bark extract weight of the bark with the weight of the fabric is required and only 1 percent mordant can do all the difference. When we look at the C lab value of orthocarpus bark dyed swatches we see that the control is showing L value as 67.68 whereas the one which is you know with ferrous sulphate it becomes 66.7 and with other also it slowly shows some lessening or even equal. But the K by S value of the control sample which is 14.65 goes up in the case of alum to 24.18 and with ferrous sulphate is go, it goes up to 39.52. So in this case we can say that alum or ferrous sulphate or even potassium dichromate are very good for the orthocarpus bark dyed swatches as a very good mordant. When we look at the rubbing fastness, washing fastness, the fastness properties of jackfruit dyed swatches, we will see that control shows washing and light fastness as three, three to four, but when it is alum modented it becomes four, when it is ferrous modented it becomes four to five, when it is copper sulphate modented it remains four all along, which means that these mordants also play a very crucial role in the uh, assessment of uh, fastness properties and in the actual fastness properties of the dyed swatches. Because after all why are we using mordants? Why we were not because if the control would be good enough having good wash fastness and light fastness do you think anybody would do a mordanting step? No, the modenting step is primarily done for better dye uptake and better color, color fastness. So because we want a dyed fabric to have several more wash cycles, we use this mordent. Otherwise control shows poorer wash fastness and light fastness than the modented samples of alum ferrous sulphate and copper sulphate. These are the shades that were obtained by jackfruit bark swatches. The control is very light camel brown in color. The ferrous sulphate is fairly good. Copper sulphate is also good. Alum and stannic, uh, stannous chloride are almost similar. So what it goes to prove that Ferrous anyway has a responsibility of darkening but copper sulphate or alum or even stannic could be one of the better 
mordants for jackfruit bark extract. So artocarpus bark which can be easily peeled off has been shown to have good dyeing prospects. Metal mordant in conjunction with artocarpus bark extract was found to enhance the diability and fastness properties uh, of affecting the cotton material. Thus, the net enhancement of dye uptake due to metal mordanting has been found to be ranging from 55 to 62 percent even in this case. With different mordants, the respect uh, with respect to the control sample. The higher percentage of color strength in the case of cotton makes arthocarpus bark well suited for these natural materials. So th which means that arthocarpus is one of the best materials for the dyeing of cotton and one can use it even on commercial scale. Moving on, we then used Bixa seeds. Bixa is nothing but a natto. Bixa or Elana is a small tree or shrub measuring from 3 to 5 meters in height, sometimes reaching a height of 10 meters as well. Seeds measure 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 centimeter in length and 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 centimeters in diameter and their shape varies from pyramidal to almost conical. These seeds are considered the part, plant part of commercial importance since the pericarp layer that surround the seed contains the pigment that has wide industrial application. About 80 percent of this pigment is the carotenoid known as bixin which has a dyeing property. The seeds of this plant produce one of the dyes most frequently used worldwide not only in food products but also in textile, paint and cosmetic industries. Cotton dyeing was carried out using metal mordants. And here we had also used enzymes which we will show in the next slide. But with the control sample uh, and metal mordants, it shows that when control has an L value of 93.76 with alum, it became 93.22. Whereas the K by S value increased from 2.3 to 9.4 and for copper it became 11.83 and with ferrous it became 13.6 which means 0 0.06 which means that the cotton fabric that were dyed with bixa seeds have good prospects when alum or copper sulfate or ferrous sulfate are used as mordants. Just by controls it does not adhere to the fabric. Now looking at the shades these are not very apparent in this but they are in reality they are quite uh, uh, you know uh, bright colored. The aqueous extract of Bixa yielded peach to light orange to brownish orange shades on cotton fabric with good fastness properties with metal mordants such as alum, copper sulphate and iron sulphate. So we had very good iron sulphate means uh, ferrous sulphate and you can see it is the darkest and cotton was dyed with anato or bixa seeds and these are the results that are shown here. Next comes the dyeing with vinivel. Vinivel is another plant extract. The two step dyeing was used as pre-treatment, tannic acid and mordanting step and then dyeing with vinivel extract was carried out for three hours between temperature 30 to 40 degrees centigrade. I would like to draw your attention to let you know that because we are trying to bring down the energy requirement in the dyeing process, 
most of the dying we are giving a little prolonged time but we are keeping the temperatures almost at room temperature the dyed fabric were dipped in saturated brine solution for 15 minutes acting as a dye fix and then rinsed thoroughly in tap water and allowed to dry in open air the calorimetric data obtained from dyed cotton reveal that pre-treatment markedly improved the wash fastness in terms of change of shade of the dyed fabric with respect to control sample. It also increased the color strength and flattened the shade of the dyeing, which means that very even dyeing was obtained. Now this is a new source, Winniewell is a new source of dye and what we were trying to show here that many of these sam the dyeing samples or the plants that we have chosen are from uh, around us. They are available, onion skin, bixa seeds, uh, you know jackfruit bark, they are all available around us. When we look at the C-Lab values of the dyed swatches with Winnieville, we find that if it is only control, which is just the dye, then the L value is 72. When it is control tannic acid and dye, it becomes a little lighter because of the tannic acid and so the value becomes 74. But when it is you know, ferrous sulfate, it becomes 72.14 from 72.64. But the K by S value, which is the most important value among the C lab values, which is from 10.19 to becomes, it, it becomes with alum 16.40 and with copper sulfate, it becomes 81.86. Now, what does this mean? that among all the values of K by S for Winnieville, copper sulphate is the choice of mordant because it can give the same depth. Even ferrous sulphate does not give that kind of K by S value depth. So, slowly we get to know that there is also a kind of compatibility or I can say suitability of modern with natural dye and every dye is not suited only with alum or copper or iron. There are some selectivities and that we can know only when we are doing a thorough study of these. Uh, you know, when you do one by one each dye, you dye cotton and then you mordant with various mordants and then compare, take the C-Lab value, take the fastness values, only then you can come to a conclusion that which one is better, which one is most suited, which one is best matching for a particular dye source. When we look at the fastness properties of the dyed swatches with Winniewell, we find that the control shows only washing fastness uh, uh, below 2 or even two, uh, 2 to 3 and light fastness is 2. But the moment you, the alum is treated, it becomes 4. And with copper sulphate also it becomes 4. Of course, ferrous sulphate we know that it will be a little higher. And therefore, mordanting with stannous is okay, but with stannic it did not give any good result. So, at least again we come to an inference that what is best suited for Winniewell. The best suited is alum, ferrous sulphate, copper sulphate and to some extent potassium dichromate, but definitely not stannic chloride. These were the shades that were available. The botanical name of Winniewell is Cosinium fenestratum and it has been shown that it has good dyeing prospects. Metal mordant in conjunction with the extract of Winniewell was found to enhance the dyeability and fastness properties affecting 
the, that is of the cotton material. Thus, the net enhancement of dye uptake due to metal modern has been found to be ranging from 31 to 50 percent in the case of cotton with respect to the control sample. So, now we know that you know these mordants do play a major role. Now we know that these that treatment with tannic acid enhances the color stability. When you treat the material cotton material with tannic acid followed by metal mordanting followed by dyeing we saw different dyeing results and we now know for sure that what works for which dye and similarly we have done extensive study for almost 55 dyes that we have isolated or identified from the nature around us which can be very good sources of natural dyeing. So, what we can conclude now that cotton can be dyed with good fastness properties and color depth after taking proper precaution and adapting the steps mentioned. I made a statement saying that cotton is toughest to dye and we have proven that it is no more so because if we take the proper steps along with what we have tried to you know learn through this lecture then it is not impossible it is possible. If any of the step is skipped the dyed fabric would not have the desired results. Hence it is important to conclude that the following all the steps correctly with proper measurements of the dye stuff modern maintain the and maintaining the correct pH and temperature to get consistent result with repeatability. Commercially many natural dyes are being used for natural dyeing of cotton and have been launched in the market. There are lot of fashion products which are marketed by Fab India and many such like who are using natural dyes in a very big manner. Now that is possible only because so much of uh, research has gone into it. Therefore cotton dyeing now let us systematically recapitulate what all we learnt. Cotton does not have any surface which is very receptive to begin with. By scouring, bleaching the surface is at least smoothened. Then with the treatment of tannic acid the surface activation is done of the cotton fabric. More functional groups come with tannic acid so that when the mordanting step is done the mordants are picked up by these functional groups of the tannic acid and in tannic acid it is mostly polyphenol so there are lots and lots of hydroxyl groups. The hydroxyl groups then attach the metal ions and the metal ions then attach to the uh, dye molecule. So they become like a bridging head between the dye molecule and the cotton fabric which has already been surface modified with tannic acid. If we follow this systematically we are bound to get very good results through our dyeing process. If we miss out any of these steps then the results will not be desirous and we will not get the desired shade or evenness in the dyeing. As I told you continuous stirring, proper rinsing and drying the at every stage by air and not in oven are some of the factors that needs to be kept in mind. Cotton dyeing with natural dye is a pleasure because when you see the results of your white fabric changing into a colored desired fabric it is it gives an immense happiness. When you see 
your fabric which is colorless and which has turned into a colored beautiful dyed material it gives immense happiness and this happiness has come from nature we have so much of natural color available around us that we were able to identify 55 new sources i have taken only a few examples to exemplify cotton but they, we have done it on all the 55 and each one gave beautiful shades we have made a shade card and that is how we were able to give this technology to many of these commercial centers which require new knowledge new upgraded technology easier and mostly we have focused on room temperature using very little of metal mordant and sometimes we have used enzymes and sometimes we have even shown that metal mordants can work so with this we have come to an end of this chapter there are challenges of natural dyeing of cotton but we have to overcome those challenges while natural dyeing offers numerous benefits there are several challenges Challenges of color consistency, mordanting, fiber preparation, achieving consistent color results with natural dyes on cotton can be challenging due to the variation in the natural material themselves. Plant dyes may vary in color intensity depending on factors like soil condition and climate and differences in cotton fiber properties. Mordants Cotton fiber have low affinity for natural dyes, so protein-based fibers like wool and silk are better in terms of taking the color from the natural dye. Mordants are often, often required to improve the dye uptake and color fastness. Fiber preparation is required in case of cotton. Cotton fiber needs to be properly prepared to ensure the dye uptake takes place and they may involve scouring to remove natural oil waxes and other impurities that may inhibit dye absorption other challenges are the light fastness and the wash fastness but we have come to a large extent and we have come a long way and we have shown that some of these have got good fastness properties by the proper standardization and optimization of the dyeing processes although they have limitation in color range but nevertheless naturally dyed fa fabric has an earthy look and which is very appealing to the niche market environmental concerns are also you know taken care of when we are doing natural dyeing and environmental friendly they are definitely natural dyes are more environmental friendly than synthetic dyes their production and application can still be uh, impacting the environment so we should use less of uh, metal mordants but issues such as water usage energy consumption waste management all are addressed when we are developing a method to ensure sustainable dyeing practices so with this we have come to an end of this lecture. Thank you very much.